So I'm Liam, and I'd like us to welcome back Heartfelt Men. And I'd like us to start today by busting some myths about masculinity that I learned as a boy. These myths have plagued my life and ruined my relationships for far too long, and maybe they've done the same to yours. So it's time they went away. Here they are. Vulnerability is weak, feelings are feminine, and your feelings are my responsibility. So I want to share a real story of what life is like when you believe these myths. It's my story. When I was a little boy, I was pretty happy and I was pretty lucky. I was born into all of the privilege of being a straight white boy in a loving family in a first world country. For a long time, my greatest challenge was, should I ride my BMX, should I play video games, or should I play soccer? I had great friends that I was close to, I was good at school, I was happy. Life was pretty good. As a boy, like most boys, I expressed my emotions freely. I laughed, I yelled, I sulked, I cried. But when I was about nine years old, something changed. As, as a little boy, I learned that I was no longer allowed to have feelings. I was no longer allowed to cry. I was no longer allowed to care too much. Boys and girls, men and women, taught me the price of disobeying these rules. Fag, pussy, sissy, weak. Grow some balls. Be a man. As a little boy, I didn't understand. I thought I'd done something wrong. I thought I was something wrong. I felt the shame of believing that who I really was was not enough. That somehow I wasn't a real man because of my feelings, because of who I was. And as a man, I'm taught that I should be tough, that I shouldn't ask for help. And so I didn't. So I put away my heart, I retreated to my head, and life became very lonely for me for a long time. As a man, outwardly I had it made, but inside, I was still hiding. I was profoundly stuck in my life and I was miserable. And I couldn't work it out. I was blessed to be in a loving and beautiful relationship with a wonderful woman. So why didn't I feel loved and loving? I was working with some of Australia's best and most creative companies. So why didn't I feel creatively fulfilled? I could have had anything I wanted in my life. So why couldn't I figure out what it was that I did want? Why did I feel alone? Why did I feel lonely even when I'm surrounded by friends and family? For a long time, I was frustrated and I was angry and I was looking for somebody to blame. It didn't matter who, anyone, the government, culture, media, friends, family, my parents, my teachers, partners, anyone except me. From some deep unconscious place in myself, I saw myself as a victim and I related to the people in my life the same way. I saw them as victims like me or I saw them as somebody who I could blame or who might rescue me, or who I might rescue, so that I could prove to them that I was enough. Eventually, I ran out of people to blame. I ran out of people who I could feel rescued by. And I was left with just me. And in that place, I realized that I was my own victim. I was my own villain. I was my own rescuer. And in that moment of just complete desperation, I finally gave in to my vulnerability and I finally asked for help. Facing the emotional demons that closed my heart as a boy has been one of the most painful, confronting and terrifying experiences of my life. And it was a beautiful breakdown because I learned that I was nobody's victim. I learned that as a boy, I had chosen to believe these myths so as a man, I could choose to let them go. And choosing to take self-responsibility, to take responsibility for myself, set my heart free. So let's go back to these myths. Because I believe that vulnerability is weak, I never truly let myself be seen by anyone. And I wondered why I never truly felt loved or understood. Because I believed that feelings are feminine, I decided that women were the only ones who were allowed to have feelings. So I did my best to put my feelings aside. And I never showed up truly anywhere in my life. Because I believe that your feelings are my responsibility, I spend most of my life trying to avoid or protect other people's feelings. 
especially women, because I was taught that as a man, it's my role to look after the weaker sex. And I included your emotional protection in my role. This meant that I was not willing to be open and honest truly with anyone, and it had a huge price on my life. Emotionally, I was a boy in a man's body. The little boy in me who was scared and hurt was too scared to be vulnerable and to truly show who I really am. They say that a boy becomes a man when he chooses to take responsibility for his own life. Too often I think that we don't include taking responsibility for our emotional lives in this and for the myths that we choose to believe. <sighs> Even now I can feel myself closing up. So let's bust these myths. Vulnerability is courage. It's to take a courageous leap into possibility. It's to have the courage to show who you really are, what you really feel, what you really think, what you really want, and to believe that that's enough. It's to have the willingness to risk it all for the, some, for the sake of something that you believe in. Brene Brown says that vulnerability is the birthplace of all emotions and feelings, not just the bad ones. It's the birthplace of love, of connection, of joy, of empathy, of creativity. You can't pick and choose. If you say no to vulnerability, you say no to all emotions, and then you've lost everything. Feelings are not feminine, they're human. All of us boys and girls are born with open hearts. Some of us just choose to close them at some point. <sighs> my feelings are my responsibility alone, just like yours. This is the only empowering way to look at this situation. To choose anything else is to believe that you are a victim and I am too. This is not to say that we should become selfish and ignore empathy. It just recognizes that there is a huge difference between rescuing somebody that you believe is a victim or supporting somebody who just needs a hand. Busting these myths and choosing to take responsibility for myself has been hugely transformative for me. And as I've changed my relationship with myself, it's changed all of my other relationships as well and it can do the same for you. It's so much more exciting when we see each other as creators, as creative partners, not as victims, not as people that we can blame or people that we can rescue or be rescued by, but as true partners, as people who will challenge and support each other to become the best versions of ourselves. And it's so much simpler and easier when we both have the willingness to share what we really feel, what we really think, what we really want. When we do that, we both feel heard, we both feel supported. So we both get what we want. And from that place, we co-create experiences that neither one of us could ever have dreamed of creating by ourselves. It's pretty fun, it's pretty awesome. But it's, it's not easy. It's not, it's not something that happens overnight. But it is worth it. Too many men have felt the shame of feeling like they're not enough as a man. And this hurts men and women. Shame is powerful. It's highly correlated with violence, aggression, depression, and suicide. In Australia, the leading cause of death for women between the ages of 15 and 44 is men. They're killed by their intimate partners. For men, it's ourselves. It's suicide. There's something really wrong with the situation. And I need to be clear, as this is on us, this is a men's issue. It's not just a women's issue. We are doing this, we are killing women, we are killing ourselves. So it's on us to take responsibility for this behavior and change it. And also we would really appreciate the support of men and women in changing the culture underneath this which breeds this shame. We both created this culture together and we can change it together. Really this is about something bigger than heartfelt men, it's about building creative partnership between men and women. Men's issues are women's issues and women's issues are men's issues, they are issues of humanity. And they are interrelated. They move together or they don't move together at all. If we choose to play a game where only one gender can win, then humanity loses. We can do better. We can choose our third way. We can choose creative partnership. I was hugely inspired by the speech that Emma Watson gave to the UN about gender equality. And I loved that she tried to build a bridge between men and women, that she invited men into the conversation because this is all of our business, equality. And I think that this campaign can go further. Me for me, he for she, she for he, we for we. First self-responsibility, then empathy, and then unity. 
and then from that place, anything is possible. What a powerful idea. Heartfelt men and powerful women working together to rise above the challenges that we face in this world and to create new possibilities. Let's make it happen. Thank you.